welcome to the Chew. There is nothing like gathering up your best buds, feeling the wind in your hair, and embarking on a good old-fashioned road trip. Yeah. Uncle Clinty, are we there yet? Not, not yet, Mikey. Cool your jets. Oh, how about now? Slug bug, you're Ow. it. Slug bug. Ow, Clinty. Slug bug, you're it. Slug bug, you're it. And I'm so hungry. All right, I enough, did. enough, all of you. I'm going to pull this car right over. It looks like we made it just in time for your appetites and my sanity. All hour long, we're celebrating Slug great bug. American eats. Wow. You guys really nailed those lines. You nailed them. Oh, we need oh, a minivan. Boy. Yeah, we need to never act in anything ever again. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> how do you guys feel about road trips? I got to tell you, I'm not the. Do you like them? I'm not the biggest fan of a road trip. I feel like every time I take a road trip, something goes wrong. I, what do you think? I kind of have to agree with you. I think they sound amazing to me. They sound so romantic and like you get to see the whole country and there's always surprises. But I get so car sick, <laughs> like literally from minute five that we're in the car. Um, <laughs> I remember this very distinct time actually when I was I was maybe six or seven and I was journaling and my parents were on the road trip. Journaling? Like, I know. I was a very emotional child. Of course child. she was. Aquarius. She was, Aquarius. she was writing her application to Harvard. I know. That's why you were getting was, sick. You're riding in the car. Shut up. Anyway, so, so um, I was writing this journal, and I and we we'd stopped at a bunch of like little farms and things to eat, and uh, like lots of butter and cheese and stuff. And I was writing, and I said, "We did all these things. We ate butter and cheese. I feel sick. I think I might throw up." And then there's a gap, <laughs> and I come back because I'm thorough, and I said, "I was right." <laughs> I was on thorough. <laughs> I still have the I'll take a, if I, When I go to my parents' house, I'll take a picture and send you guys. Uh, the, the road trips to me always feel more like family vacation than anything. Yeah, you know, like, yes, yeah. Yes. Chevy Chase. Like, yeah, I, I mean, the, and the, actually, our car looks like the family vacation. Oh, yeah, yeah. it does. Yeah. Roll them up. Uh, when I was, I, I didn't, we didn't road trip a ton when I was little. We just, we didn't go on a lot of vacations. But when me and my buddies took like our first kind of big spring break right around college, I had a Jeep and all of us drove to Key West in a Jeep. Well, Jeeps are small for four grown men with yes. luggage. So we were trying to figure out how people could sleep. So, cause we didn't have enough money to stay at hotels on the Dude, way. Right? So we're in the back seat trying to figure out how to stretch out and sleep. So we tied our feet to the roll bar oh. so our bodies could lay on the on the chair, which seemed like a brilliant idea as a oh. you know as a young it college did? man. Well, I, there were some you know there were some things involved. So <laughs> we fell asleep, which was great. But then when I woke up, I couldn't feel my feet for like four hours because we had strung them to the, roll bar. to the roll bar. Yeah, so. So our feet were up in the air so our backs could lay on the... Yeah, bad idea. Wow. Don't ever talk wow. about me. <laughs> really? So we well, took tell one... Tell us your story, Carla. Oh, no. <laughs> you know so we about. took one in college, too. We drove, but we used to, when we went to spring break, we avoided all of the Daytonas and the Cocoa Beaches and the Fort Lauderdales. We went down to Marco Island camping. It was my freshman year, so there was no mom to tell me, hey, put on some sunscreen. Oh. 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 18 hours in the sun bubbling skin. Oh, yeah. So we go to the doctor and they say, yeah, you have food poisoning. I mean, skin poisoning or sun, sun poisoning. poisoning. I have to put on this black cream made of uh, silver nit nitrogen. You were silver getting nitrate. all the ladies. And so, no, no. So we all made, we made a company decision. We drove north up to Homosassa Springs where the manatees are. And I sat in Homosassa Springs having manatees come up to me while my skin floated away for five days. Oh. Road trips, they're great. Fantastic! They're great. Oh my gosh! <laughs> All right, but today's uh, topic is Great American Eats, so let's see what food stories America is dishing about right now. David Beckham had a bizarre birthday dinner. He posted recently on Instagram uh, his dinner of choice for his birthday. Uh, it featured a plate of ham, a fried egg, coleslaw, pineapple rings, mushy peas, baked beans, and potato wedges. That's kind of a wow. weird birthday. That's piece, a little that, strange. That's what he wanted. Sounds like David eaten. Beckham enjoying the same things that I was on spring break before he put <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. What foods would you want on a, on a, for a birthday meal? Caviar. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Something luxurious that doesn't take a lot of time to make that somebody else can do very quickly. Yeah. Something that looks better on a Oysters. Plate yeah. You know, something Oysters. really easy. Yes. Mm. How about I, this? This oh, is, check this out. Have you heard of sushi? 
Sushi. 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 Not sushi, but sushi. No. There is a Milan-based sushi chef who is combining his love of basketball oh. shoes and his oh, culinary talent what? to create these edible tiny shoes out of Dude, ingredients like amazing. sushi rice. Those aren't just basketball. Oh, he ran the gamut there. He's that's got awesome. like some classic Vans, Adidas, and the Jordans. Those I like are fantastic. The Adidas. You like them? I like them. Yeah. Oh, that's I like good. it. I'm in. I like it. All right, moving on. This wedding invitation went horribly wrong. Okay. <laughs> It's gone viral. All right, it features an interesting menu choice. Okay, you have a, it says here, initial what you'd like to have for dinner. <laughs> Beef, pork, or a child under the age of two. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how many people checked off the, I'll have the kid. I'll have the kid. I, I, but I gotta say, well, my issue with that invite is not even necessarily the choice of child for dinner. It's, you have a choice of beef or pork. I know, right? It's yeah. like, that's a, that's a Midwestern, I guarantee you that is a Midwestern wedding. Right? right? Yeah, it's like either chicken or steak or fish. All mammals. All mammals. Oh, mammal. oh, mammal. Vegetarian gets lamb. Yeah, in the, gets lamb. Vegetarian gets lamb. Yeah. In, the, in the Midwest, we barely know fish even exists. <laughs> Mario, what are you whipping up first today? Well, con ketchup is a condiment staple no matter where you are, of course, and I've got a way to use up the very last bit with my spicy curry ketchup. Oh. Although, this, this bottle in my family would qualify as still half full. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but if you have a little bit left, Daphne, you want to help me? I would love We're going to make a spicy curry ketchup. We're going to take a little bit of curry, a uh, tablespoon and a half. Okay. That's good. Then a uh, teaspoon of chili powder, mm -hmm. a teaspoon of paprika, a squish of sriracha, a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. I feel like this could be a Bloody Mary based. This place. could be a cocktail, exactly. Then a little bit of honey. Oh my God, this sounds amazing. And then you shake it up. And of course, while you're shaking, your friends make some sweet potato fries. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Ooh, it Taste smells it. Delicious. Pour it out, pour it out, Dad. Yeah. I'm excited make about a this. Powder at the top. Okay. Hold on, Carla. There we go. There we go. All right. Now, what do you think? Oh, it's delicious. Yeah. It smells amazing. Like, like repurposing condiments, especially when it's down to like the last third, is a lot of fun, and it's a way to let your freak flag fly. Yeah. I'm not even a ketchup. I'm not a, like a fan of ketchup, and that's delicious. Mm. Sorry, guys. Excellent. Um, I guarantee it's going to be a fantastic show today. What do you guys have? Yeah. I think. Well, mm. I'm in the kitchen with James Pickens Jr. from Grey's Anatomy. Mississippi comeback sauce, and it's not what you think. Mm. You're gonna love this. And I'm cooking with the fabulous Cynthia Nixon. And since it is request a recipe week, I'm putting a spin on one of her favorites with my Chipotle spice mm. chili turkey. I know I'm excited for today's show, and so is our KFC Zinger tasting table, who's joining us all hour long. Hey guys, I hope you brought your appetite because we have a delicious surprise for you later in the show. We'll be right back with Cynthia Nixon. Don't go away. first guest had me saying, I'm such a Miranda after six spectacular seasons on Sex and the City. And now she's back on the Broadway stage in the unforgettable, and I mean it is unforgettable, The Little Foxes. Please welcome the fabulous Cynthia Nixon. <laughs> Congratulations, you were just nominated for a Tony. Yes. Oh, thank you. A very well deserved thank nomination. Thank you. Thank very well deserved. We'll talk a little bit about the show in just a second, but okay. where were you when you found out you were nominated? Uh, I was coming back from dropping my six year old at school, uh, and I, I, I have a Blackberry. Wow, what? They oh, make wow. those? I have a Blackberry. Still yeah, well, you know, kind of. <laughs> and um, I got a bunch of emojis from a, a very good friend of mine, but on my Blackberry, they just come up as boxes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so I thought either she's really happy for me or she's outraged. Oh, I've been yeah. Robbed, you didn't know. I didn't know. But then the emails started coming in. So, that so you live an emoji free life. I can't even imagine what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you're missing out on. Now, you are a born and bred New Yorker. I am. All right. Is that for me? That's for you. It's a green Ooh, tea if you would like you. it. I would like it. Okay, yeah, have a sip of thank that. You. So, uh, New Yorkers, 
sometimes they live in small apartments, and yes. there's a lot of restaurant options, a lot of takeout in New York. So a lot, lot of Chinese food. A lot of Chinese food. Yep. So I thought when I was a kid, I thought restaurant meant Chinese restaurant. <laughs> I didn't understand there was any other kind of restaurant that you could go to. So did you ever learn how to cook then? Um, you know, my mom was a really good cook, um, and my dad, after my parents split up, my dad taught himself to cook, but. My mom taught me to bake things, but I just mostly watched her and I thought, oh, when I grow up someday, somehow by osmosis, I'll learn to cook. <laughs> How'd it turn out? Uh, it's okay. I'm it's pretty okay. good cook. Oh, you are? Okay, yes, awesome. I now, I, it's request a, request a recipe week, which is hard to say here yes. on the two. And you requested a recipe from us of chili, and I yes. hear that you're kind of obsessed with chili. I am a little bit. What is I that am all about? A little bit. Well, my dad is from Texas, and so um, my dad was very proud of his chili, and he retired to Mexico. He lived in Mexico for the last 11 years of his life, and he won a number of chili cook-offs. Oh, 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 the standard in is high. Mexico. Uh -oh. Well, so. Cynthia Nixon, I developed this chili recipe just for you. Yeah. Do you want to? Do you want to do a little sure, stir? Sure, a little okay. stirring. A little stir so this is a turkey chili. There's some pepper. Oh, uh, some spicy peppers in here. Yes, we're gonna put some chipotle and adobo. Yum. So we've got onion and garlic and a red pepper, some Yum. olive oil, some Yum. turkey. To this, I'm going to add these really wonderful spices. We've got oh. chili powder, coriander, yes, oregano, and cinnamon. Yes, I love cinnamon in my chili. Yes, me I too. Do. So that's I do. going in there. A little tomato. And my paste. pot roast as well. Cinnamon. Oh. oh, I have not done that. Yes. Look at you, fancy McFancy <laughs> pants. All right. There we go. A little tomato paste. Nice, okay. nice, nice. Do you put this in your chili? A um, strong cup of coffee? No, I don't. You're going to love it. I put Worcestershire, but this is very intriguing. Very intriguing. You could even put a shot of espresso in there as well. Really? Yeah, you can have it for breakfast. Does it taste like coffee then? No, it just no. perks the whole thing up. All right. Okay, just perks does it up. Does it make you very awake It though? does a little bit. Okay. I'm very, I've had a few bowls already. I have so, to be careful when I feed this to my kids, right? Oh, yeah, you might have to. Whoops, yeah. Sorry, I forgot okay. about that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I chili. Cindy, I, I have to tell you a story while you're stirring. Yes, okay. please. Okay, you are please. in The Little Foxes on Broadway. Yes. Okay. Now, it's a play, yes. and I wanted you were coming on the show, so last Tuesday I'm like, I'm going to go see the Little Foxes so I can yes. talk to Cynthia Nixon about the show. Yes. I call the theater. I say, I want to make dinner plans afterwards. So I'm like, how long is the show? They go, two hours, 35 minutes. I go, oh my God, two hours, 35 minutes. <laughs> and there's not even any singing, right? No it's, singing, right, and I'm a daunting. musical guy, yes. right? So I tell my husband, Damon, yeah. I'm like, if I'm doing this during the first intermission, because there are two, that means that we're going to pretend I've got a migraine and have to go. <laughs> However, let me tell you something. That play was amazing. Oh, amazing. Oh, Carla oh, I, if it were you. 10 hours long, I would have sat through it for 10 hours. It goes by hours. quick. It goes by really quick. It is beautifully acted by you and the rest of the cast, including Laura Linney and yes. lots of other fabulous yes. people. Yes, Richard it, Thomas. It, it, yes, Richard yes. Thomas. It's amazing. And you and Laura Linney actually trade roles. Is it every other night that you do that? Um, it's a patchwork, unpredictable pattern. Oh gosh. Although oh. you can, if you, you you can know who you're buying tickets to see, but it, there's no there's no pattern for us. Oh, there isn't. Okay. No. All right. Well, I'm, I'm coming back to see it again when you guys switch. 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 Which I think is amazing because yeah. it's such a great trick to have everybody go twice. Twice. You want to see it twice. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you totally want to see it twice. Yes. Have you ever, so I'm just going to add the rest of the stuff. So we've got a, um, a Chipotle, Chipotle chili. Chipotle, I'm very strong on Chipotle. And some myself. adobo, yes. some kidney beans. Yes. Yes. Yum. And some crushed tomatoes. Nice. And we let this cook for a little bit. I was a little bit. worried that it was only going to be tomato paste and not real tomatoes, oh, yeah, so no. I'm very yeah, happy. Yeah, no, it was just, I got caught up in my story. I forgot all that. <laughs> all right, so uh, just, you know what? Why don't we keep starting this? More yeah. Cynthia Nixon when we come back. Don't go away. All that money. Money. That's 1900 Alabama. 1900 Alabama. All right, welcome back. We're here with the fabulous star of Broadway's fabulous The Little Foxes, Cynthia Nixon. All right, so uh, yeah. you're, you're a real chili aficionado. Okay. Your dad has won awards, and now yes. it's time to taste <laughs> our, our spiced chipotle chili. Yum. With, uh, we have a whole fixins bar here wow. for you, too. All right. Fantastic. Can I serve you a bowl? Yes, please. All right, while I'm serving this, there's a fixins bar over here with everything from, oh, avocado, sour All cream, right. jalapeno, All onion, right. cheese. All right. But I want to ask you, this isn't yes, the first please. time that you've ever had two roles on Broadway at the same time. Is that it? is correct. That is not the first time. I just need to know what kind of cheeses these are. I believe that's Cotija cheese. Oh, right. And this is a little cheddar If I cheese. was authentic, I would think that, but I'm not. You're going to go for that. <laughs> so I'm going to go for the cheddar, yes. Um, yeah, when I, was, um, when I was a freshman in college, I did these two Broadway plays that were happening at two different theaters that, um, yes, I called Hurley Burley and The Real Thing, and Mike Nichols had directed both of them, which mm. is how that happened. Wow.
Well, it's very all about Eve, right? When she has to go from... <laughs> well, not really, right? yeah. 42nd Street. 42nd, 42nd Street. Street, okay, yeah, yeah. Yes, yes. All right, and also, you're starring as Emily Dickinson in A Quiet Passion. Yeah. Okay, so you have this thing for early 20th century characters, evidently. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm a 19th century girl at heart. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations on that. Thank you, so, thank tell you. Me, tell me what you think of the chili. All right, Got here, my fingers wait. Crossed. Remember the coffee, the cinnamon? That is delicious. Yeah. Mm. And right? it doesn't taste like coffee. It, it just it Right, it just hurts it, it all up. Buoys it all up. That's really yummy. All right, it. so Cynthia, everyone here knows that I'm the resident Broadway nerd. Oh, yes. Okay? Okay. And I like a little challenge when we have our Broadway stars yes, on. So yes. are you ready for a little Broadway battle? I am. You, you can bring your chili with you. Can I bring yeah, my chili? I'm going bring my chili, too. Let's go on over here. Can I bring my chili? You can bring your this tea, bring your chili, bring it all. I'm going to put you in this podium if that's all right. All right, I'm all right Dabney, gonna tell us the rules. make an appearance on another show where they don't feed me. I'm right? just telling you this Aren't right we the now. best show? The best. The best, the best show. The best. Okay, here's the deal. So I'm going to read you a Broadway trivia question, and the person who buzzes in first with the right answer gets a okay. point. Okay. But if you're wrong, the other person automatically gets a point, and you must wait until I read both possible answers before you buzz in. The first person to three points wins this incredibly pretty crown. Oh, I want that crown so bad. I'm so you're going to give us you. optional answers, and one of them is right? Is you're that right? right? Yeah. Well, okay. This is multiple and if choice. if you get it wrong, I would get the point. Okay. <laughs> now that we're clear. Okay. Oh, I always make the mistake of going high. Go low. Yeah. <laughs> Here is your first question. How many Tony Awards was The Little Foxes nominated for? Was it A, three, or B, six? Cynthia. Six. Correct. Correct. One point, Cynthia. Okay. That seemed like cheating. I'm That's sorry. I was that like, I didn't like count on that one. Uh, okay. Oh, Clinton, you're off to a slow start. Number two. He's in the show. <laughs> oh, sorry. That was <laughs> disqualified. That means I get it. <laughs> I, unless you can guess A or B. Okay. Glenn Close stars as Norma Desmond in Sunset Boulevard, a character originated by what actress in the 1950 film? Was it A, Joan Crawford, or B, Gloria Swanson? Clinton. Gloria Swanson. That is you correct. You did not wait until she finished I feel question. like she did. I feel like Cheater. she did. Cheater. Cheater. What do you mean, Cheater? cheater. Oh, cheater. Out of the, out of the answer. All right. I knew All right, we're tied at one and one. Which of these shows won a Tony for Best Musical? Was it A, Titanic, or B, West Side Story? Clinton. West Side Story. Incorrect. Uh, what? Titanic one? It's Titanic. That's, I didn't like that show. <laughs> you that story is amazing. All right. All right. Sorry, Cynthia's in the lead. This is the last. If you get this question right, Cynthia, this crown okay. is yours. All right. What character is nicknamed the Demon Barber? Was it A, PD a Peter Pan or B, Sweeney Todd? Sweeney Todd. Cynthia? Sweeney Todd. That is correct. Yay. Did you take it? going to fit her like won. a necklace. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so Thank much you. for being here. Thank you. Do not, if you're in New York City, do not miss The Little Foxes on Broadway at the Samuel J. Friedman Theater. We'll be right back. To the two, you all know our next guest as a seasoned doctor and kind mentor, Richard Weber on Grey's Anatomy. And uh, what you may not is that he and his wife just opened a restaurant. Please welcome the multi-talented James Pickens Jr. Hey. Here you are, sir. Here's an Arnold Palmer. Cheers. 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 Welcome. Cheers. Welcome. Cheers. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Michael Simon's here. That means you're from Ohio. <laughs> <laughs> Cleveland in the house. We've got a date. Cleveland in the house. Dating over there, too. So, yeah. Very nice. um, so what are your food memories growing up? My food memories growing up. My mother, we, 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 we barely had, like, eggs and bacon for breakfast. We, my, my mother would fix rice every morning. Did you do sugar and butter? Sugar and what? butter. What? Yes, sir. Yeah, see? <gasps> see? Sugar and butter every morning. I didn't have packaged bacon until I got to college. Wow. What? What did you have instead? Yeah, they would, my dad would get in and he would slice it off the slab. Oh. That's oh. Central that's Market. You, yes, Central, Central Market. Market. Central Market. Yeah, I remember those. And my dad was a small game hunter, so Anything he brought home, my mother would fix it. Oh, wow. Oh, rabbits. Yeah, the whole night, I, I, I've eaten everything. I like Daniel Boone or something. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> he was a Daniel Boone. 
Daniel Boone family. Man, the Daniel Boone family, yeah. Well, you and your wife just opened a restaurant. I mean, yeah. I mean okay. Just opened the restaurant. Yeah. How the heck did that come about and kind of save you from it? Oh, <laughs> my, my wife had this vision that she wanted to reintroduce this generation to, to heritage cooking, yeah. to the things yeah. that were, yeah. that were, were such a part of our culture, uh -huh. especially African American. Uh -huh. And so she went on, I like to call it this culinary archaeology tour. And she started it from Virginia and worked west of Texas. And she just found these incredibly unique and rare she recipes. Is. And she kind of updated them and ramped them up a little bit. And Black Bottom Southern Cafe was born. Yeah, yeah. I love that. I love the name. Yeah. I am doing a summer little trip in the summer. I'm going to uh -huh. start in Virginia. And uh -huh. I'm going to work my way to Nashville. I'll have to call her for uh -huh. some pointers. Uh -huh. So. So what are we going to make today? Are we going to do something uh, from the restaurant? Are we going to do something from the restaurant? It's a little appetizer, southern popcorn, which is deep fried okra. Oh. Oh. Bam. Well, that's, I promised, I promised everybody yeah. at home, I said we're going to do southern popcorn, and yeah. I didn't think, I'm sure that you guys weren't thinking of this. Yeah. Okay, so tell us what we're going to do. Okay, so what we're going to do, we've already got some okra we've cut already up yep. on the bias, and then we're going to make kind of like a slurry. Okay. okay, all right. Okay, and that will be, and we're going to let you kind of do okay, this. We're going to have a little cornstarch corn here. Yep. Okay, this is a little rice flour. Yes. Oh, so it's going to be so extra I, crispy. I know, yeah. extra uh -huh. crispy. Eight little, ounces of each yep. of Yep, and then a Love little turmeric. Yep. Put a little turmeric in here. Turmeric for some color. For a little color. There you go. Got to have a little bit. And then we have have a little sparkling water, okay? Yep. A little chilled sparkling water. We're gonna add that. Yep, and that's just under like two cups. Exactly, okay. I'm gonna kind of make a little slurry with it. You do that very well, <laughs> I must say. Very I am quick. very impressed. Ooh. All right, and, and, and we, have, we have one right, give me head this one, Michael. Right, we got this one right yeah, here. Yeah. Okay, Michael. For a little bit. And then what we'll do is we'll take some of this already cut up okra. Mm -hmm. All right, and put it in here, go ahead. We'll okay. let you do that. All right, so put, put that in, in there. Put it in there, right, yep. ball yep. bing. And then we'll take some of the slurry, and we're gonna pour it in here oh, instead of kind of oh, dirt. Right, that's and so then, smart. Yeah. And then do it there, and then just kind of take the lid here a little bit. Oh, what? It shake. Shut and up. Give it, and give it the give it the shake, 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 shake. <laughs> <laughs> uh, You're almost as smooth and suave <laughs> as you are. Over All right. Anatomy. And then we got uh, some canola oil here. Yep. And we're gonna pop this into the oil. I'm gonna let you do it. I could yeah. do it. I could fry. This I is, know. This is yeah, you're from Cleveland. Yeah, so nothing we else. can we fry can stuff. Fry yeah, we stuff. can fry. That's we, what they were they were talking about fish in the first segment. I said in Cleveland, the only time you know fish is during Lent and it's fried. <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. Getting that stuff out of Lake Erie. Yeah. <laughs> and you, you didn't know what you were gonna get. Right. You know? All right. So Michael's gonna. There goes. Those are going right. in. They're, they're frying up really nicely. Right. We'll finish this up. Plus more fun with James when yeah. we come back. Don't go away. Yeah. popcorn, which is the fried okra with yeah. a Mississippi comeback sauce. sauce. Right, wow. Mississippi comeback sauce, yeah, which is the kissing cousin of Louisiana remoulade. Nice. And it oh, goes great nice. with any kind of fried food and stuff, and it's basically a little mayonnaise base with some chili sauce, some tarragon, some chives, mm. a little uh, smoked paprika, oh, granulated yum. garlic, onion powder, and a little cayenne. Bang. Boom. It's got a little yeah. kick. So it's how got do we serve kicker. it up? Well, we just, uh, you can plate up a little of the okra and just kind of okay. dip it like in this. there and go for what you know. Okay, let's okay. go for what we know. Let's go for what we know. Oh, I just want a big pile. This is what I want if I have such a restaurant. And tell, remind us where the restaurant is. The restaurant is in North Hollywood. It's in what they call the NoHo Arts District. Oh, yeah, okay. We got a great location. And uh, when you're in Los Angeles or up in that area, come on by and let us serve you. It's you know, LA delicious. Really this. Like, they there's do, not yeah. a lot of this kind of food no, in Los no. Angeles. No, it's not. Perfect. No. So give her a shot. And it's amazing. And you know, I, I, mind you, I was not an okra fan before this. See, I'm you not know? either, but I like your fried. Oh, this is, this is slamming. This mm -hmm. is slamming. Mm -hmm. That's just so good. Mm -hmm. Wow, it's good. <laughs> it's good. Mm -hmm. The sauce Super makes crunchy. it. Oh, don't you Super crunchy. crunchy. Okay, mm -hmm. so I think what people may not know about you, here you are an actor, and you have been on Grey's Anatomy for 13, 13 seasons. Wow. I can't even believe it. 
Thank Can you. you remember what it was like when you first, like, when you first did your uh, read through? I mean, like, so you ch you went for like the audition? Yeah, I'd, I'd gone for the audition. I had just come off a show. Uh, we had ended, and you know, I'm an actor, so I was looking for the next gig. Right. My manager calls. He said, "There's this medical drama, and they're looking at people." They didn't have a title at the time. Oh, it was, it was just called, medical drama. Yeah, it was called the Untitled Shonda Rhimes Project. <laughs> True story. So I, they called me in, and I was the only actor they called in for this role. So they saw you as... They saw me, and I went in for the network, long story short. They say, okay, I went in and did the audition. They say, will you step outside for a second? I did. They came back in, they called me back in the room, and they said, what are you going to be doing for the next five years? And Bam. I was just, wow. And then it's been 13. Cool. That's a good day. It's amazing. 30. Yeah, season 13. Yeah. I mean, so we've seen your acting. Yeah. We've seen your cooking skills in action. But what you guys do not know at home, this guy is a cowboy. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> Look at you on oh, a cow. Uh, now it's time. Come on over here, Jim. Oh, Jim. my God. It's time <laughs> to see you. Hey, we'll take your coat. Rope a cow. Take right, your take coat your off. Coat. Okay, we're watching it. And I got yeah, my coat. Okay, I don't know about y'all you know. at home, but there's nothing sexier to me than to see a black man in a cowboy hat. <laughs> okay. So here's your rope. Uh -huh. If you succeed, Mike? you'll get this custom Dr. Cowboy hat. Oh. Do it like you mean it. Woo. Yes. Elsie, Elsie wants to be roped. <laughs> yes. It's <laughs> <laughs> okay. We got it. We got it. Do one more, one more time. time. Ready? I know you're gonna get this hat. America's favorite foods is fried chicken. Yes. And recently, we surprised Jen, a busy mom and chicken lover, with a trip to the KFC headquarters in Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. That's where she got a behind-the-scenes look at how their delicious new Zinger chicken sandwich is made. Take a look. Today I had so much fun in Louisville. I got to see and do so much in just one quick day. The Slugger Museum was amazing. I got to see, you know, how bats were made from start to finish. I got to go to the Churchill Downs and really see behind the scenes, see some horses. It was really, really cool. And then, of course, the KFC White House. I was not expecting to see the red carpet there. I felt like a celebrity of some sort. Welcome to Kentucky Fried Chicken. This is our headquarters. It was built to be a miniature White House for the Colonel in the 1970s. Come on in. This is our Colonel's museum. It used to actually be his office. I'm not sure that phone works. <laughs> Over here is actually the Fort Knox safe that he used to keep the original recipe in. And it's still a secret? Even I don't know what the 11 herbs and spices you are. You don't even know? Come I on. Do, I do not know. So Chef Bob Doss mm -hmm. is going to take you into our kitchens, and you're going to make our world-famous Zinger sandwich. It's our best seller in over 120 countries. And uh, you're going to be one of the first people to try it here in the US. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's go. Hi, Jen. Today we're gonna bread our world famous singer sandwich. Oh, great. Yeah, this is our flour and the extra crispy seasoning. We've got our chicken here. These are 100% all white meat fillets, and it's already marinated in our singer marinade, primarily consisting of cayenne pepper. Mm, yeah. Okay. okay. And then we're gonna take it back into our basket here. We dip in our water, back in our extra okay. crispy seasoning. There you go. You're a pro. Thank you. Yeah, we're gonna lay them out on a rack here. Unlike some places you go to, you're just gonna get that kind of that freezer fryer patty. This is hand breaded, hand prepared, and we take pride in that. This is something you can do at home. I'll have to it. try this at home for yes. sure. My dad's first job was as a cook at KFC. That's amazing. So he went through this exact same I'm process, sure I did. suppose. Yeah. yeah, so we've got our fillets breaded, yeah. and we're ready to go to the fryer. Great. There we go. 
Are you ready to build our spicy, crispy zinger sandwich? Let's go. Okay, here we go. We're going to take our kernels mayo on the bottom of our freshly toasted yep. sesame seed bun. Then you're going to take lettuce. Okay. One of our freshly prepared zinger fillets. Okay. And there it is, the world famous zinger sandwich. I'm ready to eat. So Excellent. Let's go. Okay, here we go. That's really good. Not too spicy, but a good kick. There's a huge difference when you freshly bread the sandwich. Oh, absolutely. It's a much juicier, crunchier, it's much more flavorful sandwich. It's delicious. Uh, I know my husband will love it. I know my toddler will love it. And I'll even give some to my little one, too. You know, some kids don't like spicy. We actually offer two non-spicy sandwiches. One is a little chicken little. And then we also offer our double crunch sandwich. So if they don't like spicy, it might be some good options for them. We did a good job. You did a great job. Thank you. This was my first time in Louisville. I absolutely had a blast. It was a whirlwind of a day for sure, but I just loved being able to experience every different bit of the day. Loved it. Wow. Well, Jen clearly loved the new Zinger sandwich, and our KFC tasting table is enjoying it too. What do you guys think? guys, guess what? Everyone in our studio audience is going home with a KFC prize pack, including a gift card, so you can try the delicious KFC beer and a $5 fill-up. Get on, guys. We'll be right back. Hey, everybody. Welcome back. No matter where you are grilling, is great. Now, when the weather warms up, but there's nothing worse than a grilling disaster. So we ask you guys to send us your biggest fails on social media so we can help you fix them. Yeah. First up, this photo from Courtney in New Jersey. Uh, hey, that's a real scroll. <laughs> that was her brisket. It became completely engulfed in flames. Now, the first thing to know about brisket when you're smoking it is it should have that beautiful kind of crust on the outside. Should be brisket. This is taking it to a different level. So, so what happened with the brisket is she put it directly over the flames. You want to do indirect heat while smoking, so you still get that beautiful crust. But the brisket should be over here, or in a perfect world, you could have a small smoker with a side so you could get the complete indirect heat for it. But she put it right on the heat and brisket burns. All right, next up, a picture from Wendy in Tennessee. Ugh, what is Looks going like on out there? Corn on the cob got a little too crispy, Uncle Clinty. What? So I believe that there's two things that happened here. I believe one, the corn that she bought wasn't of the freshest variety. <laughs> Probably old to start with. And then if you're going to put corn on the grill, I recommend soaking it overnight in a little bit of salted water first. We actually have some over there, weighted down and soaking. <laughs> So that way when you put them on, they will cook nice and evenly, they will stay moist, and if you put the salt in the water, your chicken will be, se or your uh, corn will be seasoned. Chicken too. So those are my tips for the day. I have a question about the soaking of the corn. You what is this golden stuff called? Do you soak it in the silk. Really, the silk? Do you take the silk out before soaking, or do you soak it the whole thing? The whole you, thing. you could take the silk off then soak, or you could leave the silk on and the silk on and then soak. Either way. <laughs> Silky. <laughs> either way is fine. It's going to protect you from it burning. Okay. But you can clean it either way. The moral of the story is just soak it. Soak, soak it if you got corn. it. Okay. Soak it if you got it. Soak it if you got it. That is all the time we have for today. Thank you, Cynthia Nixon and Dave Pickens Jr. and two of your Jen for joining us today. And thanks to our KFC Zinger Tasting Table for hanging out with us all hour long. Come back tomorrow. We're throwing the two's best baby shower ever. Go to the two.com for all these two.